are such a genuine gem. Thank you for clicking on my video. I'm Brooke McKenna, but today's case is the abduction of Jayla Gladden and how she escaped. Now, this young woman was put into a situation that no one should ever be put in, but what she would do next would bring the power back into her own hands. By the way, I post so much content for Suspect Summer in July, so if it's something that you like, then please make sure to subscribe. Now let's get back to the story. It was 2017 in Georgia, and Jayla Gladden was a 21-year-old student living in an apartment in Carrollton, Georgia. The night of September 4th, Jayla would leave her apartment to go to a local grocery store down the street from her apartment, and they lived around 50 miles west of Atlanta. It was about a 11 30 p.m. and she was going there to buy some tea and some medicine but little did she know that this would change her life forever. Jayla was wearing a fluorescent green easy to spot Nike shirt and she was posting snapchats while she was in Kroger the store and Jayla was a super smart beautiful girl who was so incredibly strong and a just brilliant woman who was who was raised to be that way by her wonderful mother. She was also one to always want to help people, which is why she was studying to be an occupational therapist at the University of West Virginia. And that is where she met her boyfriend, Tamir, who she had been dating for two years. They lived across the street from each other and they were basically best friends and boyfriend and girlfriend. They were inseparable. The night of the fourth, Jayla even told Tamir that she was going to go down to the store, that she was feeling sick and hoped that the medicine and the tea would would help her because she was feeling that like she was going to get a cold and so Tamir didn't really even think anything about it it was like down the street and so he just said okay he didn't think it was much of a big deal but he would soon regret that you see at around 11 30 Jayla began to walk to her car with her bags in hand from the store she was walking th through the parking lot when a man approached her and asked her for a lighter she simply said that she didn't have one and continued walking. But little did she know this man was walking with her and she would soon feel a knife pressed against her back as she approached her own vehicle. Now the same voice that had asked her for a lighter was telling her to get in the car. Jayla had to climb through the driver's seat to the passenger seat and at this point this abductor was getting in the driver's seat and asking her if she knew the way to Atlanta. Later on the journey this abductor would park at an abandoned church parking lot and tell her to take off her clothes. She would start pleading and crying and trying anything she could to get him to stop and he told her simply that crying wouldn't do anything and she might as well stop and so she did. She did what she was told and he proceeded to sexually assault her. Now after this there was a parking lot around the church building that was a uh, playground for children and this abductor brought Jayla there and kind of had her in a chokehold saying that this would be a good place to discard of her body. But thankfully at this moment, that's not what happened and they got back into the car. The abductor started driving again only to ask Jayla if she knew how to get to the nearest gas station. And this is when Jayla decided that this was her chance. You see, Jayla was a very incredibly intelligent woman who had been, of course, like I said, raised that way. Her mother often had her watching the Law & Order SVU shows to get an idea of what the world was really like and what she could possibly encounter and what to do in those situations. And unfortunately, this was a chance that she had to use that knowledge she had, even though she shouldn't have had to. But she decided to tell this abductor that she could get him to a gas station, but she would need her phone for directions. And thankfully, he either didn't really think about what he was doing or wasn't smart enough to realize 
but he handed Jayla her phone. She didn't waste any time. She turned down the brightness on her phone, so of course the abductor couldn't see what she was doing, and quickly shared her location with her boyfriend, Tamir. And at this point, Tamir had woken up to this text message. He had fallen asleep because he just thought his girlfriend was going to the store. It wasn't a big deal. But when he woke up to see that she was almost to Atlanta, he kind of freaked out, not understanding why she would have been there, especially that late at night. She, he even texted her back just saying, what are you doing there? To which she responded a one word answer that would make his stomach just fall. And that was kidnapped. Tamir didn't even know if she was kidding or not and almost went to the fact that she could have just been messing with him and even said, you know, if this is serious, I'm going to the police. Like, you better not be joking, basically, uh, trying to get her to stop if that's what she was doing. And she just responded in God. And that's when he knew that she would never say that unless something was very wrong. And he immediately jumped out of bed. He ran to her apartment, began banging on the doors of her roommates, telling them what had happened. Then he ran to the Atlanta Police Department to file a report and to get them moving on this case to find her. He got to the police station and didn't even turn his headlights off before running in in a panic. You see, this whole time Jayla had been texting him just like few word, answers but they in, they contained so much information she would think say things like my car knife just to give him all the information he needed without of course her texting paragraphs to him where the abductor could see her at this point jayla had said don't let me die and that was one of the last things she said before tamir got to the police station and could tell the detectives what was going on thankfully because she had shared her location because she was giving all this information it was very easy on investigators and they even found out who her abductor was but this was not a good thing because now they knew how dangerous of a situation she was really in because he was 28 year old timothy wilson who had been in and out of prison his entire life and had just gotten out of prison and had been standing outside of that very Kroger for hours looking at the perfect victim to steal the car and take to Michigan and they were unsure of what he would really do with her and at this point Jayla hadn't responded to any texts in two hours. Police down where Jayla lived then contacted the Atlanta police, sent the location to them so they could go to the place that the car appeared to be parked. And this was in a parking lot across the street from a gas station that her abductor planned to rob in the morning. As soon as a police officer drove into this parking lot and saw that the engine was running but the lights were still off, they kind of moved closer and at this point the abductor must have seen them because he immediately turned on the car and sped off through the parking lot only to hit four parked cars and a parked patrol car. Jayla immediately got out of the car and began running. She started FaceTiming Tamir and she was sobbing. She was getting away but Tamir could see the red and blue lights in the background and knew she was safe. However, her abductor, Timothy, had fled the scene, jumped the fence, and it would take until the next morning to find him sleeping on a park bench. He was charged with aggravated assault, rape, aggravated sodomy, false imprisonment, and aggravated assault against a police officer. Jayla would later go on in interviews to say that what was going through her mind the entire time was anybody in her life who had ever impacted her life, anybody that she would miss, anybody that made her want to fight for her life, and at that moment, thinking of everyone, she decided that's exactly what she was going to do. She wasn't just going to go with this man willingly. Of course, nobody would. But, you know, if when you're in a scared situation, you can shut down. That's a viable option for your body to do. And she wasn't going to let herself do that. And instead of trying to fight with her fists... She decided to fight with her brain. Her mother's voice was in her head this whole time and telling her to look and watch this man, to see his every move, to hear exactly what he was saying to her, to give her any clues. Because that's what one thing that she learned from all these criminal shows that she watched was that the abductor, the person that is always trying to harm you, will always tell you so much more about themselves than they even realize if you just look close enough. And that's exactly what Timothy did because he began talking to her about the fact that he'd been in prison so many times and she thought to herself, he probably doesn't know much about technology at all. 
So, if I know more, I can get my phone from him to get locations. Jayla survived because of her brilliant brain, but Timothy obviously didn't even have one because when he was finally caught, he pled not guilty. He is still awaiting trial today, but Jayla remains to be one of the bravest women that I have ever heard of. Um, when I read about this case, I, I can't even tell you how inspired I was that this young woman overcame all of that, all of her fear, and decided that that wasn't how she was going to let her life end, that she wasn't going to let this man take advantage of her, no matter the damage he had already done. I just wanted to share this story to show that there is hope in every situation, no matter if you think that there isn't any anymore or not. Fight using whatever you can because you deserve to survive just as Jayla did. I hope this case was as inspiring to you as it was to me because there are not many abduction cases that I look into that have a happy ending like this and there are still so many scars emotionally and physically that Jayla may have and it's not like everything is perfect now but she gets a second chance at life all because of herself, because of what she did to keep herself alive and this it's just this story was too incredible not to tell you all and i just think it it's a bright light in all of the darkness that is true crime and knowing that so many cases go unsolved so many abductions just end in a cold case and nobody ever knows what happened or you do find out and it's the ending that everybody hopes hadn't happened but in this case, we get a happy ending and Jayla gets to go on with Tamir and live a happy, happy, fulfilled life. And that's all I wish for her. If you were watching this, Jayla, I want you to know how much of a inspiration you are to everyone all around the world, to girls everywhere. And if there's one thing that I can tell you, it's thank you for being strong because in turn, you make so many others strong and know that we are worthy of surviving and you were too and you are meant to be on this planet right now so yeah that's today's video it's making me kind of emotional i'm not really sure why i mean you'd think a one that ends more tragically would be sadder but i think the fact that it is one that has such a good outcome and with such a strong woman just it hits me differently so don't ever forget to speak up your voice is powerful enough and i love you to absolute pieces okay Bye.